When Black Lives Matter Denmark joined the worldwide protest after the death of George Floyd and started organizing several protests here in Copenhagen, where up to a reportedly 15,000 people came out to demonstrate, then I got curious because something didn't seem right. Why were the organizers pushing for racial segregation at their demonstrations? They wanted the blacks to be up front and the whites to be in the back. They wanted the blacks to speak first and the whites who attended were instructed to be careful not to speak for them and just be silent and show support and act according to the so-called protest etiquette for white folks that was shared around. But why was this seemingly okay? Why were there so many people going along with this? They did not see or realize what this was. So I started searching the internet. I wanted to see if others saw what I saw. And I found that there were other voices out there that you could also choose to listen to that had a different viewpoint than what we were being told to believe through the media. My name is Thomas Salto, and in this video, I will not be doing most of the talking. I will let others speak and I will listen. And I hope you will too, because this is just a small part of what I found. Public service announcement. Excuse me. If y'all didn't know, this is the MSC. And frankly, there's just too many white people in here. And this is a space for people of color. So just be really cognizant of the space that you're taking up, because it does make some of us POCs uncomfortable when we see too many white people in here. It's only been open for four days. And frankly, there's the whole university for a lot of y'all to be at. And there's very few spaces for us. So keep that in mind. Thank you. It was wrong how white people used to treat black people. We yeah. couldn't sit in the front of the bus. Yeah. We had to drink from certain water fountains. Yeah. We couldn't sit in certain areas. Yeah. And here in 2020, yeah. you walked your black ass up in there and tell white people they can't sit here. You are a black racist. <laughs> you a black supremacist. Look. You might as well go get a red KKK outfit and call yourself Grand Wizard of KKK. Cause it's no uh, different from you saying that than a white person saying it. And then after all that, you come sit down, throw that fake hair back, <laughs> and you got this grin, this smile on your face, like you're so pleased of yourself. When are you gonna wake up? And this video should prove to everybody, white privilege is just a myth. Yeah. Cause if a white person got up and said this, oh, they would be expelled, they'd be getting death threats, yeah. but nothing's gonna happen to this black. You know why? This black girl. Because there is black, black privilege. privilege. Yes, I said it. Black privilege. Progressive privilege. I can give my, my statements about Black Lives Matter and how ridiculous I believe their organization is. This is America. You have the freedom of speech. You can say whatever you want to say. Why is it that my white friends don't have that same right? If you say all lives matter, which is true, that includes black lives, ladies and gentlemen, you get fired. They fired a guy who's a, who's a commentator fired him because he said all lives matter in a text message as of late it's become uh, very apparent by a lot of people that uh saying all lives matter or blue lives matter or anything like that is now deemed racist you can't even talk about an incident you know i had a friend that went live speaking about this young woman 24 years old with a with a child who was shot and killed for saying all lives matter, which encompasses black lives, murdered. Is that where we're at right now? Where we're gonna just start killing people in cold blood that don't see things our way, that don't align exactly with maybe some of our thoughts and ideologies? Many see the slogan Black Lives Matter or BLM as a noble plea for equal treatment under the law. It's a cry to secure the rights of life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness for everyone. But what does the Black Lives Matter organization actually stand for? We actually do have an ideological frame. Um, myself, 
and Alicia in particular are trained organizers. We uh, are trained Marxists. Um, we are uh, super uh, versed um, on sort of ideological theories. I do believe in Marxism. It's a philosophy that I learned really early on in my organizing career. We were taught to learn about the systems that were criticizing capitalism. We were taught to understand why there were philosophies that were criticizing capitalism. Now the um, founders of Black Lives Matter, they've come out as Marxists, and what I see is people not being able to discern between the statement, Black Lives Matter, in the same way that all lives matter. They can't distinguish between the, the slogan, that's a true statement, and the organization that's Marxist. And I believe that the organization itself is using black people to advance a Marxist agenda. And the corporations, the schools, the churches, the people that have gotten behind Black Lives Matter, the organization, they think they're helping black people. They think they're showing support for black people, but actually it's the opposite. My family structure is so vital and important to me. Not only the one I grew up in, but the one I'm trying to create right now. How do I reconcile that, what I just told you, with this mission statement that says, we dismantle the patriarchal practice. We disrupt the Western prescribed nuclear family structure requirement. So when I see that, or as a mission statement for Black Lives Matter, it makes me scratch my head. When I also see their mission is to eradicate white supremacy, in 2020, white supremacy is the mission. Woo, that's a lot of digging through minutia right there. I am on a show that I'm hosting along with another black guy who is hosting with me who replaced another black guy. And that's just one example of it. Their radical Marxist agenda is bent on supplanting the basic building blocks of society, the family, replacing it with the state, and destroying the economic system that has lifted more people from poverty than any other. Theirs is a blueprint for misery, not justice. Police murder, terror, mass incarceration of black and brown people, and a worldwide emperor, empire of destruction, genocide, and occupation and nuclear annihilation. The United States of America is irredeemable. We need a revolution for humanity. We are here today, everyone united, to make a political revolutionary statement on this 4th of July, to burn the American flag. Black Lives Matter is the chant of burning the American flag. And of course it is, because the premise of Black Lives Matter is on the, on the most shallow level that America is an evil country that's hopelessly racist that can never be redeemed and we need to overthrow the government and overthrow the traditional society. And then when you look a little bit more deeply into it, you see the founders actually say, we are trained Marxists. We want to obliterate the nuclear family. We want to obliterate all of the American institutions. And then this, the flag is a symbol of the whole country. You can see someone walking over, sets the fire. The crowd cheers. Black Lives Matter, they chant. There's a leftist liberal agenda to tear this country apart by race, if they can, and everybody that's virtual signaling and posting these blackout pictures, it's just you're buying right into it. All lives matter. And if we have any privilege at all, any of us, it's because we're privileged to live in the greatest country on the face of the world, on the face of the earth, in the history of the world. We, as Americans, have privilege but it's American privilege. And we don't see race, we don't see color. If anything, we should see that we're all part, all a part of the same race, the human race. He black, they don't care. If it ain't they people, they don't care, bro. You gonna just sit there with your knee on his neck, bro. You a, gro you a, gro you a real man for that, bro. He ain't handcuffed, bro. I ain't gonna do nothing. Man, you know why we're here? Why? We're here because it sounds like you gave a fake bill to the individuals in there. Yeah. You understand that? Yes. And you know why we pulled you out of the car? Because you was not listening to anything we told you. Right. I didn't know what was going on. You listen to us and we will tell you what's going on, all right? When you're yes, moving sir. around like that, that makes us think way more is going on than we need to know. Right. And, and, and that's all I had was obviously Gotcha. All right. I'm going to put you in the back of a squad, yeah, all right? Okay. Can, I, can I talk to you? Can, 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 yeah, we're going to sort all this out, all right? 
Key name. That's your car key? Uh, 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 it's my sister's uh, uh, key fob right there? Yes, sir. My name is all, I got one problem. Yeah, I'm going to hold on to that for you, all right? Stand up. Please, man. All right. Yeah. Because I, I was so messing with him. I was like, right now. I'm like, what's going on? Yeah, and look at you. still able to reach your side. You're making me nervous. That's why I was feeling. I was looking at my wrist. Look at it. Yeah, I got you. We'll fix all that. We'll fix all that, but you gotta walk with me. Ouch! Ouch! Are you on something right now? No, nothing. Because you acting real erratic. Man, I'm scared, man. Let's go. You got foam around your mouth, too? Yes. Yes, I was just moving earlier. Take a seat. Okay, 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 okay. Why are you having trouble walking? Because of my hands are hurt. We won't leave, man. Please don't do this. Take a seat. I'm going in. I'm going in. No, you're not. I gotta go in. Take a seat. Grab a seat, man. Why y'all don't believe me? Take a seat. I'm not that kind of guy. I'm not that kind of guy, man. Take a seat. No, I'm gonna die here. Take a seat. I'm gonna die, man. You need to take a seat right now. And I just had COVID, man. I don't want to go back to that. Take a seat. Hey, listen. Dang, man. Listen. I'm not that kind of guy. I'll roll the windows down Please, and put your legs in, all right? I'll put the air on. Look at that. Look at look, that. You're not even listening. Look, look at it. Look at it. We can fix look. it, but not while you're standing okay, out here. Hey, man. God, y'all do me bad, man. Man, I don't, I don't want to try to win. I don't want to try to win. I don't want to win. I'm claustrophobic. You ain't going to win. I'm claustrophobic. I got anxiety. I don't want to do nothing to them. Man, I'm scared as fuck, man. You made a mistake. When I start breathing, when I start breathing, it's going to fall on me, Get man. Okay, okay, okay. Let me count to three. Let me count to three and I'm going in. Please. You can't win. Please, I'm, I'm not trying to win. I'm not trying to win. I'll get on the ground, man. Go on in. 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 Don't do me like that, man. Get in the car. Okay, can I talk to you, please? Yes, you get in this car. We can talk. I am. I'm claustrophobic. I'm, I'm hearing you, but you're not working with me. God, I'm claustrophobic, man. Get in the car. Get in the car. Get in the car. Get in the front. Please. No, you're not getting in the front. I'm claustrophobic. So I was get in the car. Okay, man. Okay. I'm not a bad guy, man. Get in the car. I'm not a bad guy. Ah! Oh, God. Ah! Oh, man. Ah! Oh, my God. Please, Arthur. Please. Sit. Please. Take a seat. Ah! Please, man. Please! No, I don't get Take a seat. I can't, I can't choke. I can't breathe. Please! Please! Please. Please. Ah. Fine. Ah. My wrist. My wrist, man. My wrist, man. Please. I can't. I can't. I'm on the ground. 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 I'm going down. I'm going down. I'm going down. Get in the squad. I'm going down. I'm going down. I'm not going to lose you. Bro, you going to have a heart attack, man. I know I can't breathe. Get in the car. 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 Get in for what? Take him out. For what? Please, man. I can't fucking breathe. Here, come on out. Look at you. Thank you. Thank you. Get him down the ground. Ah. Yeah, on the ground. Ah. On the ground. Ah, my ah. 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 You got your, uh, 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 uh restraint. Hobble. Okay. I can't breathe. I'll grab that. Oh. Oh. Get him. He was saying to the police officers at that point, I can't breathe. Yes. As he was actively resisting their efforts to put him into the squad car. Yes. Now, again, in the course of your career and in the course of your uh, training experience and all of the context that you've done, have you ever had somebody say to you to attempt to bargain with you to avoid being arrest, arrested? Yes. Sort of like, hey, man, I'll, I'll do what you want as long as I don't have to go to jail, right? Yes. Or somebody may be fighting and they may agree to stop fighting with you through a bargaining process, right? Saying, if I get to sit on the curb, I will stop fighting. Yes, in certain instances, yes. Right. Have you ever had a person feign a physical ailment as you attempted to arrest them? Yes. Sometimes people will say, I'm having a heart attack, right? I think I'm having a heart attack. Don't take me to jail. Take me to the hospital. It's fair to say that 
one of the things that an officer has to do in the assessment of the reasonableness of his use of force is take into consideration what the suspect is saying and how he's acting. Yes, 100%. Right? So if somebody is saying, I can't breathe, and they're passing out and they're not resisting, that's one form of an analysis, right? Yes. Because the actions of the suspect are consistent with the verbal uh, utterances he's making, right? Yes. I can't breathe, I'm gonna... Please! Please! Ah! Ah! Other times, and in this particular case, when Mr. Floyd was initially saying that he couldn't breathe, he was actively resisting arrest. Initially, when he was in the backseat of the vehicle, yes. They are alleging that he's got two milligrams of fentanyl in his mouth when he is first approached by Officer Lane. Take a look as we zoom in and freeze the video, and you tell me what you see on George Floyd's tongue. Could that be two milligrams of fentanyl? That's what they allege in their court papers, and they say it was that fentanyl that killed George Floyd. A friend who was with Floyd that day is expected to be called as a witness, but will plead the fifth despite promising to be George Floyd's voice. And I'm very interested in, in why the change of heart when you say you're going to like, you know, I'm speaking on behalf of my man. Like he's the guy, if you're watching the video, that gets out of the car. He was actually there. So right. I'm not sure why he's pleading the fifth or, you know, I don't know if maybe there's something else they have on they him. They some, probably got something on him, right? Yeah. George Floyd's girlfriend breaks down in court as she reveals they were both addicted to opioids. And the drugs were sold by his friend who refuses to testify. It sounds like George Floyd was suffering from a drug overdose. The defense asked very important questions, pointing out that only a few months prior, George Floyd had complained of stomach pains. He had been foaming at the mouth and had to go to the hospital for a drug overdose. It appears now that George Floyd may have been in the middle of a drug deal when the police approached him. Maybe the jury will look at this politically and say the city will burn to the ground if Chauvin is found not guilty. But there is a real problem of justice here. The state, in my opinion, does hold some responsibility. But the state is prosecuting Chauvin, a man who was trained to use that knee neck restraint. That's other information that was released by the defense. It would seem that perhaps the only thing they can really do is pay out a historic settlement, $27 million, which they did. And Chauvin was just doing as he was told by the state. Now, you may say that was wrong. And I hear you. We don't like the idea that he was perhaps negligent. Perhaps he shouldn't have used his, his knee in this way on George Floyd. But it was the state. It was the police that told him to do it. I'm sorry, they can't turn around and then prosecute him for what they told him to do. All of this, in my opinion, presents more than reasonable doubt. This is the May 6, 2019 video of an incident with George Floyd and Minneapolis police. It's a year before the world witnessed him on the ground with now fired Minneapolis officers charged in his death. Floyd was a passenger in an unlicensed vehicle stopped by police. Can I do your uh, seatbelt, sir? Please, I don't want to get shot. I, I'm not, I don't plan on shooting you. I'm just saying, just take, it, take your time. Floyd is told to put his hands on the dash several times, but doesn't seem to listen. Put them on the dash. I'm not going to shoot you. Put your hands on the dash. Put your hands on the dash. The last time I'm going to tell you that. It's simple. About 20 seconds after Floyd is told to put his hands on his head, he does. Another officer approaches. Open your mouth. Spit out what you got. Spit out what you got. I'm going to tase you. Officers grab his hands. He's taken out of the vehicle and is cuffed. You're not going to get beat up or nothing. You just follow what we're asking you to do. As officers are searching Floyd, you can faintly hear him asking for his mama. He pleads with officers as they say what they found. Was there anything in it? Yeah, a bunch of pills. Within four and a half minutes of officers approaching the vehicle, Floyd is in the back of a squad. Earl Gray, attorney for fired officer Thomas Lane, wanted the video to be made public. After court, he shared why he also wants it admitted into evidence. As it shows a false narrative by the state. The state is portraying Mr. Floyd as somebody that he isn't. And if you see the 2019 video, 
and compare them, they're almost identical. Since we know what Chauvin did to George Floyd, should we have dispensed the trial? We're not going to have a trial. Yeah. Let's just, let's just convict him right now. Yeah. And there shouldn't even be a trial. He should be convicted just as is. And got off. Would you support street justice on him? Yes. Y'all should have let the should have fed him to the wolves a long time ago. Count one, unintentional second degree murder, guilty. Count two, third degree murder, guilty. And count three, second degree manslaughter, also guilty. The jurors were potential targets. Their names weren't released. If they had come to quote the wrong verdict, they might expect to be treated the way one of the witnesses, for example, mm -hmm. for Chauvin was treated. His house, they thought it was his house, it was his former house, was painted with blood. Uh, the defense lawyers were threatened. I think the jurors understood that if they didn't come to, quote, the right verdict, they would suffer their businesses, their schools, their neighborhoods. This was a case where the thumb, perhaps even the elbow, of external threats was on the scale of justice. That's why I think this case may very well be reversed on appeal by the United States Supreme Court. Yeah. The judge himself said that there are appellate issues in this case. So stay tuned. This case is far from over. Burn the whole city down. What does it matter? So I say burn the city down, you know, so they can see that we're here and continue the movement. Do you think the city's going to burn down? Yes, absolutely. No question about it? No. And that'll be the least of our problems. By, by burning all the city down, we'll teach them a lesson? I think, honestly, I'm all for burning it down. Should we eliminate the judicial system completely? Should we eliminate it completely? Um, I'm gonna go ahead and give you the flat right answer of yes. The, the judicial system, and should it be eradicated? Um, yes. If George Floyd's murderer is not sentenced, just know that all hell is gonna break loose. Don't be surprised when buildings are on fire. But to sit here and announce that, yeah, bad things are going to happen if we don't get what we want and you should be thankful or you should be cautious or you shouldn't even be surprised if something like this happens because it's what's always going to happen when we don't get our way, especially when the evidence could possibly prove otherwise. Yeah, we still want the outcome that we want because we're a bunch of sissified weirdos that think just because we spend our time watching a 15 second clip or a eight minute video that's not even the full process of what happened, we know exactly what's going to take place. I understand that Police officers abuse their power in situations all the time. And I understand that people lose their lives unjustly because motherfucking police officers are fucking stupid. I agree with you that those things happen. But to sit here and act as if every single time it's a one-to-one -one, and if it goes to trial, you should expect that the black person is the innocent one and the cop is the bad one, you're not going to win that every single time. And for you, some Black Lives Matter activists, to advocate that, yeah, violence is going to occur because we didn't get what we wanted, that's a brain dead move. George Floyd was a criminal. And just because he was a criminal doesn't mean he deserved to die at the knee of a police officer. But it does mean that I am not going to play a part of the broken black culture that always wants to martyr criminals, who wants to pretend they were these upstanding human beings that just wanted to help society, uh, that just wanted to reach out um, and, and uplift society. And we're, he has a rap sheet that is long, that is dangerous. He was an example of a violent criminal his entire life. Why are we pretending that this criminal should be upheld as a citizen, uh, 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 of a, as a martyr in black America? A martyr for a fake narrative. For the past several days here, we've had a chance to really get a, a clear picture at the man that George Floyd was. Uh, in addition to speaking to Roxy Washington, uh, who shares a daughter with Floyd, I also had a chance to speak to uh, two of his former teammates uh, from his high school football team where Floyd uh, was a standout tight end. And I, I asked them uh, that I wanted to know what George was like outside of that video that the whole world has seen. And, and they very quickly went back to a memory. Uh, they were a great high school football team, but they said that after any loss, and they were few and far between, George was always the guy to lighten the mood 
and cheer up the team. He wouldn't let anyone get down on themselves. Uh, and so on top of being an incredible athlete, uh, he was also uh, much more of a, a spark plug to that team. And uh, one gentleman in particular who now resides in Oklahoma said that uh, when he initially saw that video, Lester, uh, he didn't know the name uh, of the person who was on the ground with Derek Chauvin's knee to the neck. But uh, upon hearing that it was George, uh, he was crushed because he said that this was a man that was full of life. This was a man uh, that was full of love. And he told me a very telling story. Uh, they followed each other on social media, Lester. And while they didn't communicate that often, he said that just a few months ago, uh, George Floyd had made a post uh, on, I believe, his Facebook page where he had made the statement, everybody's going to know Big Floyd. Big Floyd is going to be known all over the world. And he says he didn't think about it at that time, but now, at, at this point in time where the name of George Floyd is being said from uh, the United States to countries all over the world, uh, he says that he wish it didn't have to happen this way, but that George's wish has indeed come true and that he has become a catalyst for this incredible movement that he hopes can maintain momentum going forward. And because of that, he's able to find some solace uh, amidst this incredible loss. They claim that they're protesting the death of one black man who happened to be an extreme criminal. Does that, does that mean he deserved to die? No, it doesn't. The police officer need to be uh, taking the task as well. But he wasn't a Martin Luther King. He wasn't Jesus Christ. He wasn't many black people that have lost their lives that didn't get uh, arrested and sent to jail nine times that didn't do a home invasion where they pulled a gun on a pregnant woman and, 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 and pistol whipped her, that wasn't high on methamphetamine and fentanyl and resisting arrest at the time of his death. There was plenty of black people who live, who are unjustifiably killed, and they don't even get a t-shirt. They don't get coverage. They don't get a t-shirt. Y'all giving this dude three funerals, live broadcasting on television? F what For what? We honor him, Reverend Sharpton. Not because he was perfect, but we honor him today because when he took his last breath, the rest of us will now be able to breathe. So therefore I, Sylvester Turner, mayor of the city of Houston, hereby proudly proclaim January, June 9th, 2020, as George Perry Day in the city of Houston. To God be the glory for the good he has done. On the way to the scene, officers are told there's a warrant for Blake on domestic violence offenses and sexual assault. Records show that Officer Shetsky recalls telling Blake, quote, let's talk about this. As Blake places one of the kids in the car, he then tells Blake he has a warrant and tries to arrest him. They didn't say why they were there? Mm-mm. They didn't say anything to me. Did they tell you that they had a warrant for your arrest? No, I thought that it had been over with. Police deploy a stun gun multiple times. Blake pulls the prongs out of his skin. Officer Shesky and Blake end up in a physical altercation on the ground. We see you, you walk away from the officers after they try to grab you. At that point, I'm rattled, you know. I realized I had dropped my knife, I had a little pocket knife. So I picked it up after I got off of him because they tased me and I fell on top of him. His is in there, probably face on the window. I'm about to get in here and check on my kids. In the video, you hear them saying, drop the knife. I think a couple people were saying that, but I didn't hear none of that. Blake turns away from the officers and walks around the front of the vehicle towards the driver's side door. What are you thinking at that point? I had picked my knife up. I'm like, I'm not really worried. I'm walking away from them, so it's not like they're going to shoot me. I shouldn't have picked it up. At that time, I wasn't thinking... Clearly, you, you said that we can just look at the video and the video tells everything. There are going to be a lot of people who look at the video and say in the video, you're walking away from the police. So why didn't he just stop and do what the police are asking him to do? I couldn't hear that. 
All I heard was screaming, screaming. My ears was ringing, so it was all muffled. If the police were fighting me, if they were, if they were tasing me, I would stop walking away from them, and, and they would have my attention. And when they tased me, I had my hands up. So... Officer Shetsky's attorney insists, quote, the officers were compelled to use force once Blake began actively resisting their verbal commands, adding that the claim the officer didn't say anything to him during the altercation is, quote, preposterous. As Blake opens the door of the car, Officer Shetsky claims Blake drove the knife toward his body. Blake denies this. Officer Shetsky then grabs Blake by the back of his shirt and shoots him seven times. According to records released by the Wisconsin Criminal Investigation, in the past, Blake was arrested for attempting to flee police and for resisting arrest. These charges were dropped. No Kenosha law enforcement officer in this case will be charged with any criminal offense. He said Officer Shesky was justified in his use of force because Blake was armed with a knife, refused orders to drop it, Officer Shetsky's attorney, in a statement, insists that, quote, race had absolutely nothing to do with the officer's actions. Blake was given every opportunity to comply with the officers, and he repeatedly chose not to. Brooks ran off with Brosnan's taser. He fired it back at Rolf, who was chasing him. The officer replied with three gunshots. Two hit Brooks in the back. I think he's intoxicated. He's in the middle of my drive-through. Oh. Oh. Come on, man. Hey. Come on, man. Hey. Hey, man, you're... Parked in the middle of the drive through line here. You were sleeping when I walked up here. What's up, man? You used to have a long day or something? What's up? My man. Come here, you didn't mean go back to sleep. You gotta move your car. You went back to sleep. You went back to sleep. Okay, why don't you move your car into a parking spot, okay? Right now. Alright. Alright. Don't go back to sleep. Just go over there. I got you. Okay. All right. Thank you. So this was a 911 call, right? Yeah. Yeah, the drive through called it in. So somebody called because he was in the drive through He just passed out in the car. Passed out in the drive through Yep. Okay. That's where I you found just him. had him pull over. Yeah, I had him move out of the way, and then when he pulled up, he actually hit over the curb onto the grass and, like, backed it up. Okay. So I, you know, I was leaving here. He's just going to drive again. You know? Sure, absolutely. All right, let me go talk. All right. The reason why we're here is because somebody called 911 because you were asleep behind the wheel while you are in the drive-thru, right? You recall that? Uh, I don't. I don't. You don't recall that? You don't no. recall just minutes ago where you were passed out behind the wheel in the drive-thru? Uh-uh. You don't recall that at all? I, absolutely, complete, I don't. Just complete blur. I, I wasn't driving. Like I said, I, I just drank. My uh, girlfriend, she probably was uh, sleeping, but like I said, I said, babe, I want French fries. So far as I'm up. aware, you're the only per person that's been seen in this vehicle, right? Yeah, only person. And you've been in the driver's seat the whole time. So how did the car get into the drive-thru line? With you behind the wheel. She drove here. I okay. said, babe, I'm drinking. In know, a black car. In the black ball ball. And you got into your car. I said, hey, you know what, no problem. I'll just meet you at the hotel. Okay. And she said, hey, right. get out. Hold on, hold on. So after she drops you off here in her black car, your car was parked where? Here. Okay. So how did your car get from here to the, the drive through line? I, I never moved. So how did it get there? It, it never did get there. I, I told you I was in her car. Well, we've got a 911 call of people reporting a guy passed out behind the wheel in the line. This officer gets here and sees you. Everything's on camera. Sees you sees in the line. here in the line. In the well, line. I, was, I wasn't in the line. Did I pull you over in the line? I, I walked up. You had to wake up, man. You didn't in pull the, him right over. Right here? No, over there. I had to wake you up. What? 
Look. They went back to sleep and I had to wake you up again. Just take a deep breath in, put your mouth over the mouthpiece, blow as hard as you can until I tell you to stop. Blah, 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 stop. Very good. I just uh, had a, a few drinks, that's it. How many? One and a half. Like I said, I was into the second cup. I wasn't even, I told her, babe, let's go because I'm hungry. I what need what to kind eat. of drinks did you have? Uh, I'm not sure. It's something she ordered. She said top shelf or whatever. Top shelf what? I'm not sure. It was, like I said, it was her birthday and it was my daughter's birthday intent to, you know, have a good time. And I said, babe, you know, I'm hungry. Let's go. My, my, my baby's mom, she was there. I said, babe, go ahead. I'm cool. You know, here's the money for the blow up bed tomorrow. Here's the money for, you know, to enjoy herself tomorrow. Just, you know, give me a burger or, or something. To right. Just take me home. I'm ready to go. So you had about one and a half drinks, but you don't remember what kind of drinks they were? No, sir. All right. I really don't, Mr. All right. I think you've had too much to drink to be driving. Put your hands behind your back for me. Here, put your hands behind your back. Hey, hey, stop fighting. Stop fighting. Stop fighting. Stop fighting. You're going to get tased. You're going to get tased. Stop. Mr. Ryan. Stop. Stop. Come on, man. Stop. You're going to get tased. Mr. Ryan. Hands off the fucking taser. Hands off the taser. Stop fighting. Hands off the taser. Brooks was on probation. A DUI conviction would have put him back behind bars. The moment I do anything out of hand, back to jail I go. Right. Records show Brooks pleaded guilty to crimes in the past, including simple battery, false imprisonment, and cruelty to children six years ago. Law enforcement, law and order uh, organization and structure is being eroded. For the last 20, 25 years, you, you, if, if you see old movies and new movies, you can see that in new movies, a policeman, an officer of the United States Army, looks dumb, angry, psychotic, paranoid. A criminal looks nice, kind of, well, he smokes hash and, and shoots the uh, whatever drug. But basically, he's a nice human being. He's creative. And he's unproductive only because society oppresses him whereby a general of Pentagon is always, by definition, a dumb, a war maniac. A policeman is a pig, rude policeman. He abuses his power. You know? A generality, generalization like that. The hatred, the mistrust to the people who are supposed to protect you and enforce law and order. Moral relativity, a slow substitution of basic moral principles, <coughs> whereby a criminal is not a criminal, actually. He's a defendant. Even if his guilt is proven, there is still a doubt. People don't understand how to behave around cops so as to keep themselves safe. People have to stop resisting arrest, and they have to understand how the force continuum looks from, from a cop's eye view. And I think this is something that Black Lives Matter should be teaching explicitly. When you put your hands on a cop, when you're wrestling a cop or grabbing him or pushing him or striking him, you are very likely to get shot, whatever the color of your skin, because when you're with a cop, there's a gun out in the open, right? And any physical struggle has to be perceived by him as a fight for the gun. And Again, a cop doesn't know what you're going to do if you physically overpower him, and he has to assume the worst. And most cops are not so confident in their ability to physically control a person without shooting him, and for good reason, because they're actually not so well trained at that. And they're continually confronting people who are bigger than them or younger and more athletic or more aggressive, and they do not have the, they're not superheroes. These are people, just ordinary people with surprisingly little training. and once things turn physical, they really, they, they can't afford, I mean, so, and this is, again, something that people are totally confused about. They think that if they see a video of somebody, you know, trying to punch a cop in the face and the, the, per, the person's unarmed, well, then the cop should just be punching back, right? You know, and, and any use of deadly force is unwarranted, but that is just insanity. It's, it's not the cop's job to be the best bare knuckle boxer on earth, right? He can't afford to get hit in the head and risk getting knocked out. Because, there, again, there's a gun on the table. 
And this is the cop's perception of the world, and it is it is a justifiable one given the, the dynamics of human violence. What do you want? I don't think you've got any insurance on your vehicle. Well, think what you want to think. Where so have you got... No, you're not going. Stop it. You're not going. Have you got... He's tried to get back into his van to leave and I've stopped him. For which for that he's punished me in the face twice. I've arrested him for assault on police. We've then had a physical pretty much a physical fight inside the confines of his van, during which time he's broken away from me, grabbed the machete and hacked me in the head at least five, six times. Only ending when he fell next, when I fell over, I shot him with the taser, he's fell, fallen next to me and I've detained him with my taser until uh, more colleagues can arrive and properly detain him. Once he'd started hitting me in the head with the machete, then I realised it was, it was turning into a, like, it was escalating very quickly and I was having to now fight for my life and I did re I recall specifically as I was falling to the floor, having fired the first shot and aiming for the second, that is, if this doesn't work, this might be it. But luckily the taser worked, it did its job, he fell incapacitated next to me, and I was able to use it to keep him on the floor and keep myself alive. You should be able to be rude to a cop in our society without being physically punished for it, right? much less killed. It's a measure of a civilized society that cops don't start beating you just because you've been disrespectful. What I see in these videos is people who just have no idea what the implications of grabbing a cop, pushing a cop, doing whatever they're doing to resist arrest. And j just think about this. It's never up to you whether or not you should be arrested. I mean, how could it be? How could it ever be? Does it matter that you know that you didn't do anything wrong? How could that fact be effectively communicated by your not following police commands? You want to be respectful to a cop because you don't want things to escalate. 46 law enforcement officers were fatally shot last year in the line of duty. There might have been two more. Okay, sir. You're going 87 miles an hour. All those costs are associated with the traffic citation, okay? Okay, are you okay? This is the moment last November when 22-year-old Daniel Clary opened fire on state troopers Ryan Seipel and Seth Kelly. That's Corporal Kelly kneeling to shoot back, taking bullets to the leg and neck before leaping to find cover. Can you step to the rear of your car, please? A dramatic turn in what began with Clary pulled over for simple speeding. Don't place your hands behind your back. But when the troopers tried to arrest Clary on suspicion of driving while high, he resisted. Stop, stop, stop. Clary, shot with a taser, falls into a lane of traffic and rises on the ground. In the struggle, Corporal Kelly's spare pistol somehow tumbles loose, secured by Seiple. For a few seconds, Corporal Kelly appears to be in control. But moments later, the troopers are punching and kicking, all but begging Clary to put his hands behind his back. Somehow he finds his feet again, grabs a pistol from his car, and opens fire before driving off. Corporal Kelly, who applied his own tourniquet at the scene, was clinically dead at the hospital and spent 12 days in a coma. He is now recovering, though, and plans to return to work with Seipel. As for the driver, Clary, he was arrested at a hospital down the road, and Jeff, he now faces sentencing this month for attempted murder. There is no systemic discrimination in America. Identify the city, identify the town. And it is amazing to me, the narrative, the false narrative is, they only react if there is a white officer involved with a black suspect. Black on black crime, not important. A black police officer involved in a, with a black suspect, not important. You don't see Al Sharpton, you don't see President Biden, you don't see Kamala Harris. It is a narrative to portray that only white and black crimes exist between a white officer and a black suspect. That is a lie. It's an absolute lie. How, how many unarmed black people were killed by cops last year? Any oh, idea? 100 plus? In just Minnesota? No, around the country. Oh, thousands. Un unarmed black people. Thousands. It seems like they're trying to erase, like, our, like, destruct the whole race of, you know, the African-American race. Now, this notion about the police, 
using deadly force against black people disproportionately? It was analyzed by a black economist named Roland Fryer from Harvard. And he said the findings were the most surprising of his career. Not only did he not find data that the police were using deadly force against blacks just because they were black, but he also found that the police were more hesitant, more reluctant to pull the trigger on a black person than on a white person. Police brutality, racially motivated police brutality is a myth. You have a 25% higher chance as a violent white criminal of dying at the hands of a police officer than you do as a black criminal. Last year, a total of nine unarmed black, black men were killed by police officers and 19 white men were killed by police officers. For those of you that aren't good at mathematics, right, you might be thinking, oh, but Candace, white people represent 60% of the population and black people represent just 13% of the population. It doesn't matter what percentage of the population you represent, it matters what what percentage of the violent criminal community you represent. A Department of Justice study from 1980 through 2008 revealed that blacks accounted for almost half of the nation's homicide victims, 47.4%, and more than half of the offenders, 52.4%, all while being 13% of America's population. 6% of the population, right, black men, 6% of the population account for 44% of all murders in this country, according to 2018 statistics. The Tuskegee Institute conducted a study of all known lynchings of blacks that occurred between 1882 through 1968. During this 86 year span, which is essentially the post-Civil War era up to the Civil Rights era, 3,446 blacks were reportedly lynched. Presently, black on black murder eclipses the number of blacks lynched over the course of 80 years, roughly, every six months. We only point a camera to white people when they do something, even though we do it at a way higher rate to ourselves, right? We celebrate our drug dealers. We're the only community, right, that would ever create hashtags to free people from prison because they committed crimes, like free Meek Mill, free this rapper, free this rapper. How hard is it to not spend multiple times in prison? How difficult is that? Is that too hard for us? Is that, I mean, is that way too high of a mountain for us to scale to do the right thing to be upstanding citizens? Black people need to hold other black people accountable. I said this the same thing. If we, this is a, a, the black America's version of the Me Too movement. If anything is going to change, we ourselves need to look at our own communities and look at each other and say, this thing cannot go down. And, and this is the thing too. There are a lot of great, great people there who are held hostage, who are held hostage by people who literally are, are, are running these neighborhoods with violence and then claiming that Black Lives Matter. When you look at the parents of these little kids who are mentioning, saying, hey, man, why aren't they speaking up for me, too? They say Black Lives Matter. You killed your own. You killed your own this time. Just because of barrier. They killed my baby because she crossed the barrier. And man, you turn, you kill a child. She ain't do nothing to nobody. But Black Lives Matter. My baby was shot in her bed. Killing your own. Nobody that to help. You killed the eight-year-old child. Black Lives Matter. It should not matter only when an officer that don't look like me hurts me. There's a lot of murders from people that look like me killing me, and I don't see the outrage. There need to be an outrage when anyone is murdered in our community. They could take anything they want, but they took my baby from me. Police say three of the suspects have long arrest records on gun charges. Not surprisingly, all three of these suspects had gun-related criminal history. Davon, a young football standout, was at a violence interruption cookout. Police say these screen grabs from surveillance video showed Davon running to his house to get a charging cord. They say they also show Carlo General, one of three suspects still at large, firing his handgun nearby. And it's not just Davon. All of a sudden, I find out six other kids around the United States lost their lives on the 4th of July. So what happened? Was there open season on young people on the 4th of July? Somebody know who did those shootings. That somebody that know need to pick up the phone and report it before 
we have some more babies that get shot and killed. They don't have a name. They don't have a voice. They don't have an identity. They have nothing. They get, tr they get nothing. Do we get a $27 million payout? If people marching in the streets celebrating when, they, when, when the people that killed them go to jail? And Black Lives Matter raised $80 million and, and, and they should be covering all their funerals. They can't get a call back. But these police officers that they claim are evil, hate, hateful, they should be dismantled. They picking these babies up in the yard. They the ones have to go home and cry to their wives and cry themselves to sleep because they see the, de the lifeless body of these babies. I want to cuss, man. I want to cuss. Screw these people, man. Screw these people. I remember seeing dead kids. That stuff don't sit right. Holding a dead baby. A three-year-old mama beat him in the head. I had a three-year-old at home. I wanted to cry in the hospital. Seeing that baby take his last breath. Everybody crying in there. You know who ain't crying? Black Lives Matter. Because they don't know that these kids are losing their lives. They don't care. But your local police officers, they, they were there. They were there for her. They were there notifying her family. They know her. They know him. They know him. They know these kids. They see them. They see them get put in a body bag. I can't stand these people, man. That's why I fight so hard for law enforcement. People don't understand what they go through. The police is a violent racist institution that exists to uphold white supremacy, protect private property, and help the ruling class maintain its power. That's it. That is, that's what it's here for. It is not for the people. We are collectively so used to policing in prisons that we are caught up on the assumption that having these systems in place is necessary for a society to function. We need to completely dismantle the Minneapolis Police Department. I think it would happen in this community if they looked to abolish the police. It would be happening. Abolishing the NYPD, that'd be suicide. But yes, they're needed. I uh, I put for them to be here. There's too many criminals out here, man. Are you kidding me? I wouldn't feel safe. First, one teen pushes that 15-year-old girl to the ground, and more than a dozen others start kicking and punching her so brutally she was unconscious. And as the boys run away, one among them. Remember, that girl is unconscious on the ground. One boy pulls her Air Jordan sneakers off her feet, and he walks away with them. We've slowed it down so you can see his face. Police want to find him and obviously everyone involved in this brutal assault yesterday here in Brooklyn. The NYPD uh, sent out on social media today saying this is sickening video of a 15-year-old viciously attacked by a group of school children. One young man takes the sneakers right off the unconscious victim's feet. We can't allow this behavior in our community. This area behind me uh, is the George Floyd Memorial. This is where George Floyd was killed back in May. Take a look. Um, these barricades have been set up by, uh, by protesters and supporters of the movement. Uh, they don't allow anyone in, not even the police. It's called an autonomous zone. Uh, and you're going to be in a bad situation here in a second. Oh, I thought if we were on this side of the barricade, no, you're going to be in a bad situation in a second. What do you mean by Because you've been situation? calling out for what you are, and you need to get out of here. Please go. We you know, you know what you are. You need to get in your car and go. We're just media. I don't give a f who you are. You've been called out for who you are. You need to get in your car and go. If you're a white person, there's a different set of rules for you. That's right. <laughs> the anti-racist, my friends, all of these people who keep telling everybody that they're out there bashing the fashion, fighting against racial discriminations out there. They're going to have different sets of rules, different public services. Instead of writing rules for white people, how about stop robbing the people who are subject to this shithole over here? You got business owners and residents near this area and they're being fucking attacked. What's the situation at the memorial? The situation at the memorial is, um, from what I understand, is kind of volatile. People that want to go and support um, doesn't feel a sense of inclusion. There is more of a like militant type atmosphere over there and a sense of fear. Kim Griffin supports police reform and was outside the courthouse protesting Floyd's death, but she does not agree with what's happening at the memorial. Her nephew, 28-year-old Amez Wright, was shot and killed there over the weekend. 
Were police able to get in and, and help him? Or police were not allowed to get into that area. He was carried out of, outside the zone of George Floyd Square. But not allowed by who? I mean, they're the police. The, uh, the law enforcement, it was made clear law enforcement was not welcome to penetrate that zone, which is an atrocity because his life was taken. And I mean, who knows whether or not he would have survived had things been different. I'd say there's probably more organization than you may realize, but a part of security culture is that like the people that need to know, know. But it's that security culture that PJ and his uncle say is out of control and bad for the community. Move the barrier so people can come in here and celebrate, you know, and really try to move forward. Last Saturday, a 30 year old man was shot and killed in the square. And his family says the ambulance was not allowed in. At this point, uh, they don't come here. And that's the one thing that bothers me a great deal. The beginning of 37th Street and 36th Street is like United States. And when we come in this area, which is 37, 38th, and 39th Street, is like Mexico, where it's lawlessness and where you can do something over here in the United States and you can run over here. It is like Mexico, where police won't be able to come. They won't come over here and chase you. Or you can do anything that's lawlessness and then get come in this area, you'll, you'll have, it's like a shelter. You'll be protected. We have to fight for our officers, okay? They, their hands are tied. We have to stand with them and fight for them. We know for a fact that if they get rid of these police, we're going to be dying in the streets. We're going to be in trouble. Black Lives Matter does not speak about the black cop that dies. Black Lives Matter doesn't speak about the black man that dies due to black-on-black -black crime. While there were people opposing her as she painted over the murals, Bevelyn certainly has her supporters, as you can see from the thousands of comments on her videos. A lot of people... Um, uh, thought I was being a hero by doing what I did, but I wasn't being a hero. I was being an American. Black people are black people's biggest threat, not cops and not white people. So when black on black crime stops, when Black Lives Matter actually make me believe that they believe that black lives really matter, then I'll support it. <laughs> this is the hood. This is Pittsburgh. I'm in Hazelwood. Dudes drop out here. Ain't no cop killing these people. Ain't no white man out here telling these dudes to sell all kind of drugs. Ain't no white man out here telling these people to kill each other. That's black people. Those are choices. How much better off would the, would the black community be if we separated the police from them? How much better off would we all be? Abolish the police. Absolutely. I think that they are disgusting. Policing in this country is about keeping black people down. They're, they're monsters. I hate the police. Police arose out of slave catching patrols. The police are an occupying army. Like, I just hate the police and everything that they stand for. How do people you think feel like in East Harlem about the NYPD? I probably the same way I feel about them, you know? I, I probably worse. How much rage is there on the streets against the police these days by the black community? A ton now, but I think there always has been a lot for good reason. Fair to say the police harm more than they help. Yeah. The white liberal is the one who has perfected the art of posing as the Negro's friend and benefactor. And by winning the friendship and support of the Negro, the white liberal is able to use the Negro as a pawn or a weapon in this political football game that is constantly raging between the white liberals and the white conservatives. The American Negro is nothing but a political football, and the white liberals control this ball through tricks or tokenism, false promises of integration and civil rights. In this game of deceiving and using the American Negro, the white liberals have complete cooperation of the Negro civil rights leader who sell our people out for a few crumbs of token recognition. One of the leaders of the Black Lives Matter organization who calls herself a trained Marxist is now being called a fraud. After property records showed, Patrice Cullors shelled out millions of dollars on four luxury homes, one of them in Los Angeles's exclusive 88% white Topanga Canyon. Now other people in the organization want an investigation into the group's finances. The head of the New York chapter of BLM Org also wants a close look at Color's personal finances, saying a self-professed socialist 
should ask how much of their own money is going to charitable causes. You judge people by their actions, ultimately. You know, they could talk all this black, pro-black this, pro-black all, whatever, but if they get some money and they move as far away from black people as humanly possible, then it kind of tells you uh, what they really think. What they're, <laughs> despite all the rhetoric, despite all the propaganda. If you're making a real impact in the community, if you start a business that provides value to society, you deserve whatever you get paid. You deserve whatever you get. But there's a difference between that and something that's starting to look like potentially a scam, or at the very least, a lucrative hustle that's not very transparent. On average, a police officer is 18 and a half times more likely to be killed by a black person than the other way around. So this entire narrative is complete smoke and mirrors. It's all made up. It's just election fodder. It's white versus black because it's an election year, not because black Americans are suffering at the hands of police officers more than white Americans. Did you know that doctors accidentally kill a quarter of a million people every year because of mistakes? Do you know that there's, there's been doctors that have been arrested for being serial killers that just were killing people because they wanted to? Do we protest and boycott doctors? Do we assume all doctors are horrible human beings because some doctors are? Or do we realize that society is not perfectible? People suck in every profession. It is no excuse to paint society with a broad brush. And when you have the leaders of the Black Lives Movement who are now talking about, you know, if we don't get our demands, we're gonna burn it down. Uh, other black people who are talking about working with other whites and other uh, other races, they're, they're being viewed as sellouts or called Uncle Toms. It starts to start you, you start to understand that you are now, you know, being controlled. You're not being treated as loved. You're actually being controlled. Someone wants to control the narrative. The mindset is to keep blacks thinking that the Democrats are is the only party that will resolve this. And the other party, the Republican Party, won't. That lie is the reason why I left the Democratic Party last year when Joe Biden did two things. One, when he said, if you don't vote for me, you ain't black. How insulting. And two, the Democratic Party abandonment of the police department. I have family in law enforcement. I recognize there are bad police officers, but those are the two reasons. If the black population voters leave the Democratic Party, there will be no Democratic Party. So they scare them into believing this lie. Now, too many see the protest as the problem. No, the problem is what forced your fellow citizens to take to the streets, persistent, and poisonous inequities and injustice. And please, show me where it says that protests are supposed to be polite and peaceful, because I can show you that outraged citizens are the ones who have made America what she is and led to any major milestones. They want more violence on the street. And it really kind of brings a tear to my eye that the mainstream media is okay with the violence. The mainstream media is always preaching tolerance. They're not tolerant. They never have been. They're liars. And Chris Cuomo just showed you how they express their true feelings about everything that's going on. They want the violence to continue. What you're seeing behind me is one of multiple locations that have been burning in Kenosha, Wisconsin, over the course of the night, a second night since Jacob Blake was seen shot in the back seven times by a police officer. And what you are seeing now, these images came and come in stark contrast to what we saw over the course of the daytime hours in Kenosha and into the early evening, which were largely peaceful demonstrations. According to a new study, the Black Lives Matter movement is linked to more than nine in 10 riots across America. The study defines riots as demonstrations in which any demonstrator engages in violently disruptive or destructive acts as well as mob violence. According to the data collected by the U.S. Crisis Monitor, the U.S. experienced 637 riots between May 26th and the 12th of September. Out of these, 91% of those were riots linked to the Black Lives Matter movement.
This is our future we stand up for. We making history yeah, right now. Is. Our ancestors lived through us. They lived through us. But we gonna cause a scene. We will be heard. Y'all don't wanna listen. You gonna feel us. <laughs> You says Black Lives Matter. I I worked here part time. Plus, I'm a part owner of this store. You said Black Lives Matter. Why don't you choke me? I'm black. Tell him, sister. Look what you did to my store. Tell him, sister. Look. Tell Look him, what sister. you did to my store. Thing. Tell him, sister. Okay. That's like, because I got their back. These are my Look. dudes right here. Good Look men. at the things you've done. Good men. Look. The Black Lives Matter. We've been here all night cleaning up. All night cleaning. Because you got black people now. standing right here with them. Tell me, That's right. Black Lives Matter. Exactly. You lied. You wanted to loot the store. You needed money. Get a job like I do. Stop stealing. This is the neighborhood. We trying to build it up and you tear it down. Where you eat, where you shop, where you get your food. I need somebody to please explain to me how this represents getting justice for George Floyd. For 15 hours straight, looters have laid waste to the store. Some of them are still inside. This is the problem. This surveillance video shows the first moments of the break-in. And this was the scene at the shop right today. A heavy National Guard presence. Local resident Rashawn Howard went on Facebook to plead for help. Come down here and help us clean this shop right, please. I spoke with him today. For an owner that does so much for our community, that, the, that gives people second chance opportunity to work. These are African Americans in this community that he employs. And you destroying this market like this now unemploys them for weeks. The details don't matter anyway, right? They never do. BLM has its narrative, which is always the same narrative, and is adjusted only to include the few sketchy and superficial details that get imprinted immediately onto the public conscious. That is why our society is falling apart at the seams, because a certain very large segment of the population doesn't care at all about the truth. And that is what is burning our cities as we speak. And I think by far one of the most disturbing incidents from this round of rioting, and, and really any of the rioting we've seen, is the apparent attempted murder of a police officer who was hit directly in the head with a brick during the melee. <laughs> What happened? Oh, he just got brick. He just got brick. Yeah, he got brick. He got brick. The main thing that set me off and really affected me personally was the death of 77 year old David Dorn. He was a retired police captain out there in St. Louis who responded to a burglary call at a pawn shop. So he's out there trying to protect the community, trying to protect businesses, and what happens? Not only does he get shot and killed right outside the pawn shop, it also is streamed on Facebook Live. Is anybody there rendering him aid? Is anybody there trying to help this man as he loses his life right there on the sidewalk? 77 years old. What y'all trying to do? Fuck you talking about y'all kidding this man over some TVs, car. Over some TVs, car. Stop playing, man. OG, come on, OG. Come on, OG. Come on, this somebody granddaddy cuz over some TVs. Call him cuz. Over some TVs, cuz. OG man, rest in peace, bro. And nothing but love, bro. You good, bro. It's okay, bro. Just relax, bro. Relax, bro. Relax, bro. Surveillance video of the suspect was in this case. It was released by the police late last week. 24-year-old Stefan Cannon is charged with first-degree murder. Police say that suspects broke into Lee's Pawn and Jewelry Shop on Martin Luther King on Monday night, June the 1st. Captain Dorn was providing security for the store and was responding when an alarm when he was shot. Any protests that have seen multiple murders, bashings, widespread looting and destruction of property is not peaceful. 
this is not peaceful. <laughs> Also in Portland, this man was bashed for standing peacefully with the American flag. What should protesters do? Well, we, we got to stay on the street. Uh, and we've got to get more active. We've got to get more confrontational. We've got to make sure that they, they know that we mean business. In the 59 years of my life, I would have never thought that I would see what is happening in America, where we have these anarchist groups, where we have these Marxist groups that are running around rampant all over the United States of America, ripping down our monuments, ripping down our memorials, and basically undermining our constitutional republic. Black Lives Matter is nothing but a lighter version of Antifa. It is also a domestic terrorist organization. And when you think about Marxism, it is a philosophy that is the antithesis of who we are in this constitutional republic. Now, why is it that so few people are standing up and saying these very simple true facts? Why is it that we're so afraid of standing up to these organizations? Why is it that we're gonna sit around and allow this, what we see happening in America, to happen on our watch? They're not gonna stop. And, and everyone beware, because they're not gonna stop. It is gonna, they're not gonna stop before election day in November, and they're not gonna stop after election day. And that should be, everyone should take note of that on both levels, that this isn't, they're not gonna let up, and they should not, and we should not. Stand up for the rule of law and not be forced into surrender to the rule of the mob. The only videos of people I see being systematically hunted are white people, by black people. I mean, here's another situation for you. So this video first appeared on Instagram and here's the post that came along with it and it says uh, from Trey Savage over here, young man, you got knocked to fuck out, bitch. You bet not run. Unk tried to kill yo, pray for Unk. And then here we go. Hashtag white lives do not matter. Hashtag black lives matter. How many more chants do I need from these people on the left with their black lives matter power fucking fists going up and down streets telling everybody, no lives will matter until black lives matter. Now, this is what you get when you run out this narrative and this agenda that every white person is a racist, every white person's a Nazi, and it's totally fine to punch a Nazi, and black people are being hunted everywhere, so it's totally fine. It's, it's hunting season open on white people. You guys on the left want more of this. People have been trying to get this post taken down considering that it's saying, you know, white lives don't matter, and it's a clear call to violence, and they want white people to be brained. And Instagram, which is run by Facebook, is like, Oh no, this is like totally fine. What are you talking about? The call to violence? Like, it just says that white lives don't matter. Stop being so sensitive with your white fragility, you fucking asshole. Instagram is like, no, this post is totally fine, right? Don't get this post, it's totally fine. This video, this video that you're watching right now, in a few days, it will get age restricted. They'll be like, oh my God, oh my God, you can't have this on there. Uh, you gotta be logged into the YouTubes to watch this video because it's like super duper racisms. Uh, I'm calling out the racism. All you fucking twats with your hate crime bullshit. Hate crimes are bullshit. Uh, but here you go. This Wouldn't this fit as a hate crime? This motherfucker uh, specifically picked out a white dude that took a brick 
to the back of his fucking head, and then in the post, while they're all laughing about this, and then in the post from his family, they're, they're, they're putting out their white lives don't matter, but this won't be a hate crime, because of course, hate crimes can only go in one direction. Hate crimes can only be performed against black people, apparently. If you talk about this video, and you point out that this is the true racism in this country, that racism is coming from the left, that racism is protected by the left, that the racism is against white people in this country, that shit will be age restricted. That will be limited. Th this could be censored, right? If you go out there and you advocate for braining white people and you push hashtags that say, kill white people, kill whitey, and, and white lives don't matter. Oh no, tech giants totally fine with that. Cause you see, one helps the narrative. One helps the agenda that benefits these tech oligarchs and the left-hand side and globalism, and th that'll be totally fine. That's why this video and this hashtag is allowed to move forward. But people calling this out, people saying, this is wrong, this is evil, this is the problem, this is the moral and social decay of our country, this will be banned, right? Any type of discussion pointing out that the true racists in this country are the Black Lives Matter group, that shit won't be tolerated because again, a narrative and an agenda must be protected. His name was Cannon. He was riding his bicycle and was shot in the head and murdered in broad daylight in front of his house, in front of his two sisters who were also children. Where is the outrage? America, we presented an American flag folded sent George Floyd away in a gold casket, raised $17 million, and this dude was put on a pedestal like he was a saint. He was a career criminal, not a good person. This was a little child, but this does not fit your narrative. So it is not all over the news. This is a huge deal, and this is what is wrong with our country. A little five-year-old child was murdered in his front yard by a black man and no one says a word. Not, it's, this is crazy. Tonight, 25 year old Darius Sessoms is in jail on no bond facing a first degree murder charge. Cannon's grandfather angered that anyone would do this to a kid just being a kid. That's evil. I, I never met this guy in my life, but that is one evil dude to do that. Evil come in all colors, black, white, brown, and in everywhere in between. Yeah, uh, again, the reason why we want to discuss this story is not to exploit death like the left does all the time. They, if these roles were reversed in yeah. this story, if Cannon was a black kid and he was killed at the hands of a white guy, they would paint this as a white supremacist and yeah. we need more gun control. Should we just gather up the white supremacists and do street justice? That would be ideal. <laughs> Uh, again, I'm not gonna say anything that would directly incriminate me, but I would say that would be a good idea. I don't want to say we need to go start killing all white folks, but it's like, but <laughs> maybe they need to feel the pain in the hurt. Feel the same pain that we feeling. Feel the hurt that you were putting out. Get that back and see how it feels. Today I spoke to the victim's mother and she says to me that the worst part of the attack wasn't even caught on camera. Moments after what we saw there, she was dragged off the bench and stomped on by the gang of eight thugs. The victim was taken to hospital after that brutal beating. She had broken ribs, significant bruising to her face, two black eyes. Her legs were pretty banged up. The poor girl has braces, so even her internal mouth wasn't spared, ripped to shreds. As you can imagine, the 16-year-old is mentally and emotionally broken to the point that she refuses to make a statement to police. She fears that if she makes a statement, the gang will hunt her down and finish the job. And how can you blame her? So the mother went to police by herself and Dandenong police told the mother that they couldn't open an investigation without a victim statement. So the cops are saying that they can't form an investigation based on the evidence You've just seen, 
And based on the CCTV showing her being stomped on by a gang of eight savages. So this gang, this gang of absolute scum are now free to target their next victims. Your kids, my kids, anyone. The question is, in the current climate, if the tables were turned and the victim happened to be black and the perpetrators were white ones, would the cops say the same thing? I guarantee not. If you're somebody out there that thinks that you have the right to demand somebody get on their knees and ask you for forgiveness, you disgust me. You got some real issues and it's not with any person on this planet, it's with yourself. You hate yourself so much that in order to make yourself feel better, you gotta make somebody else try to, make, uh, try to applaud you. That's what's really going on, no matter what color. But right now I'm talking to all the black folks that think it's their duty to make white people feel beneath them. That is racist. That's the definition of racism. You're being racist. Bow down, both of you all, read on. With their face toward the earth. With their face toward the earth, just like this white man is doing, read on. And lick up the dust of thy feet. And lick up the dust of thy feet, meaning to kiss our boots. The same way that we kiss the white man's boots, you almost kiss our boots. Are you willing to kiss our boots for what your four parents have done to ours? Yeah, how would I get your boot kissed now? Yeah, how would I get your boot kissed? Well, there you go. Go ahead, just kiss his boot. Just kiss the boot, Officer Natiza. If you don't mind, sir, one, keep going. Where we at? Who after Officer Natas at? Oh, it's, oh, it's Officer McGun. Officer McGun, come get your boot kiss, Hebrew. Let's get it. Let's get it. Who next? Oh, me. Go ahead, McGun. Most high in Christ. Who after me? Da with da? Let's get it. Let's get it. Let's get it. Who, who that, Laha? Come on, Laha. For the Mexicans and their race of people building the wall. You understand? Against this brother. This is his land. This is his homeland. You understand? Who that, Zion Kid? Come on, man. Y'all gotta recognize who the priests and the prophets of the Lord are. Y'all gotta recognize what's going on in the earth. This is a white couple right here that's proving that they are sorry for what their forefathers have That's done. right. You understand? The goalpost continues to move, especially for white people. Now it's not enough to just not commit racist acts or to say, hey, I'm not racist. I view everybody equally and I, I judge you based on your merit and character. Now you have unconscious bias or racism that you're not aware of. And even as I try to speak out and, and challenge this narrative, I get told that I've internalized racism yeah. and that I am somehow supporting these <laughs> racist institutions. So the goalpost moves and there's really no way to dig yourself out of the hole that we are in. In the wake of George Floyd's death, athletes are turning up the heat, pushing for social justice and racial equality. The WNBA dedicating this season to social justice. Warm-up shirts will feature Black Lives Matter on the front and say her name on the back. After the national anthem, both teams came together for that moment of unity and silence. Here's what our camera on the field saw and heard during that time. <laughs> The fans have finally put their foot down. They're not taking any more of this Black Lives Matter BS. They're not taking any more of this far left propaganda. They're finally saying, no, get this shit out of our sports. We don't want it. And we have to remind ourselves, booing Black Lives Matter is not the same as booing black people. Black Lives Matter is an ideological movement. It's a divisive movement. It's anti-family. It's anti-police. It pushes critical race theory, which essentially says all white people are racist and all black people are victims. This is an ideology that people are perfectly entitled, and in my view, quite wise, to oppose. Let's go back to the origin of sports.
Physically, we know what it is. It's supposed to be just guys and gals going out there and playing in this meritocracy. But the spirit of it is communal. Like, I don't, I don't ask you your tax returns. I don't ask you where you live. I don't ask you what your, what your background is. Put your hand in the huddle, and let's play for something greater than all of us. When you lose your way in that spirit, and when you start to lean into things that people are trying to escape from when they're watching your product, sooner than later, they will become distracted detached and find other ways of entertainment. A lot of times when people talk about the black community quietly amongst themselves or, you know, some of us are fortunate enough to really hear the truth that's, that's, that's oozing out of the mouths of others outside of our community, we as black folks get accused of two things, being very emotional without enough strategy. What's happening now is we're turning into a circus. Instead of talking about racial equality, racial justice, and economic justice, we spend all our time worrying about who's kneeling and not kneeling, what's being said on buses, what's been said on jerseys. I think we're missing the point. We need police reform, prison reform. Those are number one and two. Things to focus on. We need the cops, good cops out there policing bad cops. We were supposed to have our eyes on the ball, but once again, because of the combination of emotion and not enough strategy, we look lost. No people get tired of hearing me say it, but we are scared as black people in America. Black men, black women, black kids, we are terrified. Because you don't know. You have no idea. You have no idea how that cop that day left the house. You don't know if he walked on the good side of the bed. You don't know if he walked walk on, on the wrong side of the bed. You don't know if he had an argument at home with a significant other. You know, if one of his kids said something crazy to him and he left the house steaming. Or maybe he just left the house saying that today is going to be the end for one of these black people. LeBron James tweeted out a photo of the police officer who shot the black teenager with the caption, you're next. Hashtag accountability. And an hourglass. You see the emoji? That generally means time's running out. You out here doxing a man, you should go to jail. You out here doxing a man saying, you next. That's a threat, bruh. James later deleted that tweet and acknowledged that emotions were running high. It all started with a 911 call. Within about 10 seconds of Columbus police arriving at the scene on the southeast side of the city. Hey, 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 get down, get down, get down, get down. Police played the video in slow motion to give the public a better understanding of what happened in this moment. Bryant can be seen holding a knife in her right hand and attempts to stab another girl. At that moment, Reardon shoots and kills Bryant. What I can say is when officers are faced with someone employing deadly force, deadly force can be the response the officer gives. We have to ask ourselves, what information did the officer have? What did he see? How much time did he have to assess the situation? And what would have happened if he had taken no action at all? The young woman tells another officer what just happened. Their conversation was recorded by that officer's body camera. Let's take a listen. She came after me. With a knife? Yeah, so, she, so he got her. The left has built this sort of structural idea of oppression that is so deeply embedded in the black community and people of color that it is very hard to use facts and logics and reason to, to talk them out of it. And I think we just need to see examples of black people who are going against the culture. And the left wants to act like they are the revolution, they are the counterculture. I would venture to say that we are. You are not going to accomplish the goal that you want if you are doing it with hatred and vitriol, if you are doing it with the idea that you're going to force people to kneel and bow down to you for sins of their ancestors. I don't understand how we've gotten to this point in the United States of America. How are we letting people do our country like this? And to the white community or anybody that's felt guilt, on behalf of the black community, forgive us. I didn't do it, but I'm going to take the blame. Forgive us, for we don't know what the heck we're doing. Don't paint us all as these high-minded, pompous asses that feel like everybody owes us an apology. Don't paint us all bad, because we're not.
But on behalf of the black community, please forgive us. The first time I voiced my opinion about any of this in a Facebook discussion group, I was told I didn't understand the real issue because I was a white privileged man, which to me by now seems like such an auto response that helps way too many people avoid looking critically at themselves and their own arguments. It has simply become too easy to dismiss the opposition with this argument. Because I'm white, then my arguments, my position, my voice matters less. So I asked the guy who said this if he understood that what he had just commented was in fact a racist statement. Because you don't know me, you don't know my life. And so assuming that my life has been easier and that things were given to me, or that the losses I've had to bear were less tragic just because I'm white, that is a racist statement. And because I'm white, then my voice matters less, or I'm not allowed to speak on certain topics. That is racial discrimination. But he didn't seem to get that, which to me is a bit tragic because doesn't it look a bit like this movement and organization and the people supporting it are totally fine using the exact thing that they say they're fighting as a tactic to get what they want. I think you're being played. I think somebody out there is taking advantage of you using you and your sense of pride. Because all the black people I've met in my life and who I call my friends today and who I've spent countless hours on the court and in the locker room with they're very proud people, proud of their culture, proud of their history, and proud of the struggles that they had to overcome as a people, and they should be. But from where I'm looking, I think somebody out there stands to gain a whole lot more than you if they can keep you angry, if they can keep you locked in a certain mindset and worldview, because then they'll have your support and your vote. And then they get to use your rage to destroy their opponents, basically using you to do their dirty work. Because they know what buttons to push. They know how to tear open old wounds so that your logic and reasoning goes out the window and is replaced with anger. And a lot of people might not speak up about this because of fear, but it doesn't mean that others don't see that this way of trying to solve a problem is wrong. If you support the Black Lives Matter movement and want to help black people live better lives, then I think you need to clean it up really fast and come out and disavow all the bad people, all the violence and the people who have stolen the initial idea and who is now taking advantage of it and you. I really hope that you'll watch this video with an open heart and an open mind because the Black Lives Matter organization and how it's being run only creates a bigger gap between us and many problems that needs to be addressed are not being addressed. And no, there is no war to win here. Remember, we kind of tried that before and it didn't go so well the last time. The only ones that seem to be getting something out of this are the people that push you towards this rage. That is at least what I see.